There are lots of different workarounds for recurring tasks in Notion, and in this video I'm going to go over some more advanced, nuanced use cases that you may come across in your own recurring tasks. Subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay part of the conversation. For free Notion templates, check out the link in the description below. If you haven't seen the first video on recurring tasks, I suggest checking that one out because this one's much more advanced when I'm looking into formulas. So for recurring tasks, I want to be able to set the task and then not have to look at doing that task again, changing any status or anything like that. And I want it to show up on my task list that's on my dashboard. And what I want to be able to do is incorporate the formulas into my current master task database. So I've created a task database and you can see I've got a now date property and that's just going to represent the date now, for example, so I can show you how it would work. But when I actually go into the formulas, that will be changed to now and then the two brackets, which is how formulas work. Then I have the start date, which is going to be used in the formulas. I then have a selection properly for daily, weekly, monthly and yearly because there's lots of different recurring tasks. I have occurrence for any sort of number or frequency that I may need to use, and then I have a day property, Monday all the way through to Sunday, weekday, and then last day of the month. The first and probably the most common type of recurring task is one that happens daily. So I'm going to set the now date to today, the start date to today, and then the selection to daily. Now in the formula, if selection equals daily, then I want it to tick. If it doesn't equal daily, then it won't tick. What this means is I can then filter my master task database to if daily is ticked, show, if it's not, then don't. And that is how I go about showing all of the recurring tasks at the right day. If there is a tick, then it will show. If there's not a tick, then it won't show. But there are some tasks I want to do on weekdays and not weekend days. So I'm going to create another formula box and I'm going to ask if selection equals weekly and the day equals weekday. This now means that weekly has to be in the selection box and the weekday has to be in the day box. So that's the only way the formula is going to work. At the moment, that tick box is going to work irrelevant of what day it is. So we need to ask that as a question. Then I'm going to use the day formula, which gives me a number representative of what day it is during the week. So one being Monday. If it equals to one, then I want it to tick. If not, then false. So now if I change the now day to Monday, it will tick. Tuesday, it won't tick because I haven't put that day in yet. So I can now go back to the formula. I can put the or function in. So I'm asking if it equals one, which is Monday, or now I'm going to copy that formula, paste it in, and I'm going to change the number to two, close the bracket to finish it off. And now if it's Monday or Tuesday, it will be ticked. If it's Wednesday or any other day of the week, it won't be ticked. And all I'm going to do to add Wednesday, Thursday, Friday is just copy that formula, paste it in, and change the number to 3, 4, and 5. Remembering to add those OR functions at the end to make sure it covers everything. Now whenever I select a now date that is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday, it will tick. If it's Saturday and Sunday, it won't tick. Doesn't matter what week it is, as long as it's Monday to Friday. But now I want a task that is a specific day of the week. So I'm going to change from weekday to Monday, I'm now going to create another formula property and I want the same sort of check, so selection equals weekly. Now if the selection equals weekly, I'm going to use the format date function which changes the date into the day of the week and I'm going to ask if it equals the day selection. So now if the date is Monday and the day I'm asking for is Monday, it will tick. If I change the date to Tuesday, it won't tick, so I have to change the day to Tuesday and then it will tick. If we change that down to weekday, the weekly task will now uncheck and the weekly task will check because it's Tuesday, which is a weekday. Now I can set a weekly recurring task for a specific day of the week. But what if the weekly recurring task happens every other week? What I need to do is then add in some different things. So for this case, I'm going to use a different formula box. So again, I'm going to use the format date function, which is going to change that start date and I'm going to display it in weeks. So this will tell me what week it is in the year, whether it's the first week of the year or the last week of the year. I'm then going to change that into a number because at the moment it's a date property and then divide it by two. So the even week numbers will be a whole number and the odd week numbers will have a decimal point because it will be 0.5. Now I'm going to use the contains function in the formula to basically check if there's a decimal point in it. Now when I change the date, if it's an even week, it will be ticked. If it's an odd week, it won't be ticked.
what I can then do is copy that formula, paste it in and ask if that is equal to the date now. So the start date would be in the week that you first need to do the task. Then when the day changes, the week of the now will change. So it may be an even week to start with and then an odd week is the next week and then another even week, which means if those two are both equal, it will tick. So if we go into our two weeks formula and ask if selection equals weekly and our occurrence equals two, and then copy and paste that check in there, we're now asking is selection equal to weekly? Is the occurrence equal to two? If it is equal to two, then check the start date and check now's week date and see if they are two weeks apart. Now if I get rid of the occurrence, that week check won't work, and if I change the selection, the week check won't work. But I don't want to just check to see if they're two weeks apart, I also want to include if it's the right day. So I'm going to go back in my test formula property, and I'm going to do that same check again, so I'm going to use the format date of now, I'm going to format that date in the days, and then ask if it's equal to the day that we've got in our day property. Now I can copy that check and paste it into two weeks, so I'm going to get rid of the false, and paste it in. Now I'm going to ask if the two weeks are the same as a question rather than an answer, and then I'm going to add in that check afterwards. I then need to put some brackets in to make sure that the formula is still working, and then add in those two false responses at the end. Now if we go to the date, you can see it's Thursday, and we go to the day selection property, we need to change that to the right day because it's also looking for the day now. If we now look at the date that it is, it's going to look for two weeks in advance, and it's going to look for the day. So what if we're looking for monthly recurring tasks? We can do basically the same thing. So we're going to look for that prop selection equals monthly. Then I'm going to use the date function instead of day, and what that does is it gives me the number output of what day of the month it is and I'm going to ask if that's equal to occurrence. So you can see it's the first of the month, and if we change occurrence to one, the monthly tick box will tick. Now if we change the date to 18, and we change the occurrence to 18, it will now tick, because it's looking for the 18th date in the month. We don't really need any day in the selection property because it's looking for a date rather than a day. And it doesn't matter what month it is, as long as the occurrence is the same as the date in the month. But what if you're looking for this specific day in a specific week of the month? Say you're looking for the first Friday of the month, or the second Monday of the month. If that's the case, then first we need to isolate what week we're actually going to be looking in. So we're going to use the date function again and ask if it's smaller than or equal to 7. So it's going to pick up the first 7 days of the month. And now again, I'm going to use that day check with the format date, the prop now, days, and then ask if it's equal to the day property. I can then ask that first query as a question. I can put colons after that check and then put false because if it's not true, then it will be false. Now when I change the day selection to Monday and I pick the first of the month, the first is within the first seven days and it's a Monday so it will tick. If I pick the eighth of the month it won't tick because it's not within the first week. Now if I just use the same checks as we did for the last month, so if selection equals monthly and ask that as a question, and now I want to see if the occurrence equals one. So I'm going to be looking for monthly and week one. And now I'm going to put that formula in as the first answer to those questions. So the date of now, ask if it is smaller than or equal to 7, and ask if the day of now is the day that we're looking for in the property. I'm going to put the AND function at the beginning of those two checks to make sure they're doing it together, and then I'm going to put the FALSE argument at the end of the question to basically say if it's not true put FALSE, and then just finish up the formula by putting the brackets in to make sure it knows what it's looking for. So if we look back over the formula, it's looking for the selection equals monthly, it's looking for the occurrence equals one, so if we change that to one, and then it's also looking for the date to be in the first seven days of the month, and to see if it's the right day. So you can see it's Monday, it's the first Monday of the month, so it's going to be ticked. If we change the day to Tuesday, it's now looking for the first Tuesday of the month, so it's now not ticked, we change the date to Tuesday, and it's now ticked. 
If we go to that second week, it's not true because it's not in the first week. So now that we have the first week sorted, we can basically just adjust those questions to suit the second week, the third week, fourth week, and fifth week. So if we go in and we say if the date is bigger than or equal to 8, get rid of the rest of the question and ask if it is smaller than or equal to 14, it's now looking for that second week. So anything in the first week or the third week, it's not going to be ticked, but anything in the second week is. We also need to make sure that it's looking for the day as well as the week. So I'm going to put the and at the beginning and then put that format date check in there. So now if I select the date in the second week and let's say the Friday, you can see it's not ticked because it's currently Thursday, change the day to Friday and it will tick. So if we go to the first week, it won't tick because it's in the first week and it's looking for the second week. Now if I copy and paste that formula in and add the occurrence question in before that, so ask if the occurrence equals two, You can see now if I change that occurrence to 2, it's looking for the second Friday of the month. So if we change the date to number 1 and change the occurrence to 1, it will tick. It doesn't matter where you go, it's always going to look for the second of whatever day you're looking for. So if we change it to Wednesday, you can see it now matches the date, so it's going to be ticked. Now we have the first week and we have the second week. So what we can now do is just copy that second week question and paste it in after the colon. Now we can add a bracket in, and we've asked another question. Now we can change the limits on the week that we're looking for. So we can say the 15th to the 21st, and we want the occurrence to equal three because we're now looking for the third week of the month. Now if we change the date to the third Wednesday of the month, we're still looking for Wednesday, and we change the occurrence to three, the monthly will now tick. Again, we can do the exact same thing, so we can paste it in. We can change the limits to the 22nd and the 28th, change the occurrence to 4 because we're now looking for the 4th week in the month, add another bracket in because we've added another question. In the rare occasion, if you are looking for the 5th occurrence for some reason, then you again, you can just copy and paste that formula in, change the limits to 29th to 31, change the occurrence to 5, and then just add another bracket. Now if you are looking for the 5th Monday of the month, obviously that doesn't happen all the time, you can still do it, you can put the date in, change the occurrence to 5, change the day to Monday, and now the box will tick. You don't necessarily need all of these different formulas, these are just different examples to find specific recurring tasks. So if you don't need that 5th week, then don't put it in, if you don't need the 3rd week, don't put it in, only use the formulas that you need. Just to clean up the table a little bit, I am going to hide some of these formulas because they're starting to fill up some space. And now what I want to do is look for the last day of the month. So in this case, I'm going to use that day property and use last month because that's what I've titled it. So now I can use if the selection equals monthly and day equals last of the month, then it's always going to look for the last day of the month. So for this one, I'm going to use the month function, which what it does is it gives you the number of the month in the year. It's not as intuitive as you would have thought, so if I change the month to January, January actually equals 0, and December equals 11. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this and ask if it equals to 0. So if it equals to 0, it means it's January. So I'm going to use the AND function again and ask if it's in January, and also use the DATE formula and ask if it's the 31st. So now if I change the now date to January the 31st, it will be ticked. If it's not January the 31st, it won't be ticked. Now I could repeat that over and over and over again for all of the different months, but I'm actually going to group the months together because obviously there are lots of months that have the 31st, and there are lots of months that have the 30th. So I'm going to use the OR function and ask if the month of now equals to 0, which is January, or if it equals to 2, equal to 4, equal to 6, equal to 7, equal to 9, and equal to 11. Now I'm just going to put all of the ORs at the beginning. So now it's going to check if the date now is any of the months that is the 31st. So it will be true or false for the appropriate month. And because we're looking for the 31st day, I'm going to ask all of that as a question. Look for the date of now and make sure it's equal to 31 because that's what all of these months will be, and if not, false. 
So now if it's the 31st of any of those months, it will be ticked. If it's the 30th of another month, it won't tick, so I'm going to do that check in a minute. But first what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that formula and paste it into that last month check. Now when we go back to the test property, we can now sort out some of those other months. So what we can do is we can replace those numbers with 3, 5, 8 and 10, 7 and 12 are actually mistakes when I was recording the video. So now we have that formula checking all of the months that have 30 days. As you can see that didn't quite work because I had 31 instead of 30 and now I've changed it to 30. It's going to look for all of the months that have 30 days in and if it's the 30th then it will tick. But if it's one of those months that has 31 days it won't tick because it's not one of those months it's checking. Again what we can now do is just copy that formula and paste it in. Now you can see that L month property, if it's the 31st or the 30th of any of those months that we've put in there, then it will be ticked. Now for February, it's a little bit different because obviously you've got 28 and 29 in there. So what I'm going to do is use the year function and what it does is give us the year output. But what I'm gonna do is divide that by four and ask if it contains a decimal point. So now if it's a leap year, it won't tick, but if it's not a leap year, it will tick because it's going to have a decimal point in there, because 2020 divided by 4 is a whole number, 2021 divided by 4 isn't, 2022, etc, etc. Now this doesn't work indefinitely, but I would hope that within the next 12, 16 years, Notion will have recurring tasks in databases. But until then, this is my workaround. So I'm going to ask that as a question and say if it's true, then I'm going to be looking for the 28th. If it's not true, then I want it to look for the 29th. So that means every leap year it's going to look for the 29th, but every other year it's going to look for the 28th. Now again, I'm going to copy that formula and paste it into that L month property formula. I can actually get rid of one of those false answers because we have an answer inside of this question put a couple of brackets and there we go. Now you can see if we change it from the 29th to 28th it won't be ticked and if we go all the way through 31, 30th, all the way through all of the months of the year as long as the last month is ticked in the day property and it says monthly in the selection then the last month will tick as long as the day is the last day. So when it comes to yearly reoccurring tasks, things like birthdays, it's much, much simpler. So what we can do is look for the prop selection equals yearly, ask that as a question, and we're going to use the format date function again, look for the start date, and we're gonna display that as the day of the month and the month. And we're going to ask if that is equal to the format date of now in the day and the month. And if that's not true, then false. So the start date is June the 17th, and now, if we change that to June the 17th, it will be ticked. Now if we change the year and we go 2021, 2022, 2023, as long as it's June the 17th, the yearly tick box will be ticked because it's looking for the date and the month. If you're interested to see a couple of simpler ways to do recurring tasks, check out this video over here and I'll see you there.